Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel and welcome to my summer TBR. Yes, I've picked out 10 books that I want to read this summer. This is not an exhaustive list, but these are some of my priorities and ones I really, really, really want to get to. I am hoping to have a really, really good summer for reading because I'm a bit behind on my reading goal. I've not been reading so much this year and I'd just like to catch up, read all these amazing books and have the best time before I go back to uni and it crushes my soul again. <laughs> so yes, here are some books I'd like to read this summer. So the first book on this list is The Lovely Ophelia After All by Raquel Marie. This one is one of a few on this list that were featured in my last video that I've acquired recently. I want to make it through a lot, a lot, a lot of those books, but I've just picked out a few that are my big priorities. So yes, Ophelia After All is a new YA contemporary. It released earlier this year. And this follows Ophelia who has always been boy crazy. She's always had crushes on boys. She's a romantic at heart. And she's very, very firm in this identity. But when she begins having some feelings for an, a girl, this calls everything that she knows about herself into question. And she has to deal with this and discovering herself while also dealing with high school, her friend group falling apart and just the joys of being a teenager and it just sounds amazing. I've heard the best things. It was one of my most anticipated releases for this year. So I just want to finally read it. <laughs> and it, I just, look at it, it's so pretty. <laughs> I cannot, cannot, cannot wait to read this book. Oh. Next up is She Gets the Girl by Rachel Livencott and Alison Derrick. This is another one that's released this year and has had so many amazing reviews and I'm so, so, so excited about. This is a young adult contemporary as well and it takes place in college, which I love. I love college set stories. And this follows Alex and Molly. These two are complete opposite. Alex is like a shameless flirt, very confident, a bit of a reputation. And Molly is quiet, she's shy, and she has the biggest crush on one of the girls in their class. And when Alex finds this out, she says that she will help Molly to talk to her crush. and knowing that this will also help her prove to her ex that she's not really that selfish. And so the two begin working together to try and help Molly get the girl, but along the way end up falling for each other instead. And it just sounds so sweet and fun and again I've heard the best 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 things and it's so exciting because this book was written by two wives and it's loosely based on the story of how they got together which is just so cute and exciting. So I'm just so 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 excited to read this book gonna be sapphic excellency. Next up we have got These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Yet another one that has been very 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 well received though this published in 2020 so it's been out for a while yet. I'm so excited to finally 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 be picking it up. So this takes place in 1920s Shanghai and follows Juliet Kai who's just returned home to take up her duties as the heir to her family's gang, Scarlet Gang. And they have a very fierce rivalry with another gang, the White Flowers. But when people in these rival gangs start clawing their own throats out, everyone wants to know what's happening. And Juliet and Roma, her ex, the heir to this White Flowers gang, have to work together to figure out what's happening. It's a Juliet and Romeo, no, that's the wrong way around. It's a Romeo and Juliet retelling. So, so well loved. I'm so excited to read it. It just sounds incredible and also painful. I have heard that it hurts. <laughs> Next up we have got This Poison Heart by Callan Baron. This is the first in a duology as well and the sequel releases soon? Or is it just released? It will be out soon or is already out and I just want to read this duology. It sounds incredible and with the sequel being out it's a perfect time. So this follows Breeze Ice who has the power to control plants, you know, to touch a seedling and it blooms into a tree kind of thing. And when she inherits an old house, she has the perfect opportunity to play with her magic and explore her powers. But there's family secrets and things that are hidden and everything going on in this old house. And there's lots and lots for her to discover. And I think it's got some Greek mythology influence as well, which is very exciting to me. And it's also like the secret garden. And it just sounds really, really good. I'm really excited about it. This one is also sapphic and the cover for the sequel has the two girls on it and I love it. <laughs> and I'm just very, very excited to pick this one up. It's 
I've again, I've heard amazing things. I've heard about all of these, which is why they're so high on my TBR because I just want to love what everyone else loves and I just cannot, cannot wait to read this one. Next up we have got Monstrous Design by Kat Dunn, which is the sequel to Dangerous Remedy and the Battalion of the Dead series. I started this series this month in June. I read this book, Dangerous Remedy, I loved it, so now I really want to continue the series. The third book is just released, so it's, again it's the perfect time. This takes place during the French Revolution and follows four uh, teenagers who have begun working together to free people who have wrongfully made their way towards the guillotine and been imprisoned. And when they are assigned to search for this girl called Olymp and they discover her in her prison cell, she is not what they expected, not what they were told. She has these strange powers, this ability to manipulate electricity. And so they take her and then everyone wants them and they want her and it's all very convoluted and a tough situation. The royalists want her, the revolutionaries want her and her power represents so much and it could really turn the tide in this revolution and it's just really really interesting to me. As you may know I study French and I love French history, I love the language, so I loved 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 reading this book. I can't believe it's taken me so long to read it because it's I've wanted to read it since this book released in 2020 and I've just finally gotten around to it now and I mean, at least I don't have to wait for the sequels, there's that. But I'm just glad to have finally, finally read it. It's so wonderful and I'm so, so, so excited to continue the series. It sounds like a lot of stuff is gonna go down, I might get hurt, but it's gonna be a good fun time and I just can't wait. Next up we have got How to Excavate a Heart by Jake Maya Arlo. This is another one that I received recently and again, I'm very, 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 very excited to be reading it. This is a sapphic contemporary romance, it's a Christmassy holiday one but with Jewish main characters which is going to be really really fun and this follows Shani who quite literally runs into May with her mum Subaru and when the two reconnect after this and they get talking there's some feelings developing but Shani is dealing with a bad breakup and she has all these questions of whether you know she wants to get into a relationship, if this is a good idea, if she wants to get invested and it just sounds like it's gonna be a really good fun time. I cannot cannot wait to read it. I'm like should I be reading it in summer when it's like a holiday romance but I want to read it. I'm too excited to wait. But this comes out in November so it'll be a good time for everyone else to read it. I will just read it in advance. And can we just talk about the little corgi? On the cover. It's so cute. <laughs> I I just think this is gonna be the best time. Cannot cannot wait to read it. Next up we have got Babel or the Necessity of Violence, an arcane history of the Oxford Translators Revolution by RF Kuang. This one again was one of my most anticipated releases of the year and I have been granted a review copy. I'm so excited about it but I have been putting it off because I'm very very intimidated by this book. But I'm putting on this TBR because I'm going to read it and I'm going to love it. I will be very upset if I do not love this. But this takes place in the early 19th century and it follows Robin who is a Chinese boy who's taken to London to Oxford to work with the translators there. This translation society is very very elite and it's been used to service the British Empire and expand it. But when Britain starts an unjust war with China for silver and opium, Robin has to really question the society that he's in, the work that he does and revolution and can the society be taken down from the inside? Does it require violence? All these things and it just sounds really really interesting to me as someone who studies languages and a bit of translation. I find that so interesting especially as this book was also exploring translation as a tool of empire and colonialism because I think that's a really important thing to explore and it's something that I'm personally very very interested in. So I just cannot cannot wait to read this one even if I am very very scared by it because I think it might be a bit too smart for me. But I just I'm excited. <laughs> Next up we have got God Slayers the sequel to Gear Breakers by Zoe Hannah Makuta. This book releases the day after this video goes up I believe so I'm very very excited about that. 
I'm very, very excited about this. Gearbreakers was one of my favourite books of last year. I just loved it so, so, so much. So I'm so excited to be reading the sequel. This is the end of the duology. So again, perfect time to pick it up. And this is a sci-fi duology and it follows Sona and Eris. So Eris is a gear breaker. This means that she takes down these massive mechas, these mechanical monster creations that have been used to further spread the rule of Gadolia, this horrible, horrible, tyrannical city. And when she is taken in and imprisoned and captured in one of these runs, she meets Sona. Sona is a pilot. She pilots these mecha monsters, but what Eris learns is that Sona intentionally infiltrated this pilot program to take the organisation down from the inside and the two end up working together and some feelings develop and it's fantastic. <laughs> so this is just enemies to lovers, glorious, I love it, it's so well done and this book left off on a fair cliffhanger so I'm just so excited to see how that resolves how my girls are doing if they're okay because I have a funny feeling they're going to be put through hell <laughs> but I'm just so excited to read this book to continue this series I cannot cannot wait next up we have got Radio Silence by Alice Oseman this is my last Oseman verse book I have to read and I'm determined to read it before the beginning of July the like 8th because that's when I go to Yonk to London and I will meet Alice Oseman hopefully so I want to have read all of her books so I can decide which ones I want to bring to get signed. <laughs> so I'm gonna finally read this hopefully soon. So this is a YA contemporary and you follow Frances who is a study machine. She is dead set on her goal and nothing will stand on her way not even the person that she is on the inside but when she meets Alice she is unafraid to be herself but when something happens between them and their fragile trust is broken Frances is left with all these questions of who she really is and choosing to be who she was or who she longs to be and having to confront her past as well. And I'll be honest, I don't know much about what actually happens in this book. I feel like the synopsis is very, very, very vague and I'm kind of wanting to keep it that way so I can just be fully surprised by what I read. Um, I have a funny feeling I'm going to love this. I've loved all of Alice Oseman's other works, except Solitaire. <laughs> um, I just think that the themes it deals with, like, of identity and mental health are really going to speak to me. And I'm just very, very, very excited. I can't wait. I feel like I've said that so many times. I'm so sorry. I just, I, I'm not a walking thesaurus. I do not have more words to say how excited I am. And finally, we have got the Falling in Love montage by Kira Smith. I want to reread this one also before Yalk in July because I want to annotate it and like scribble all over it and everything and then take this one for Kira to sign. I'm hoping I have it done before then but if it's only halfway done then I'm not too bothered. Um, and yeah I'm just I'm so excited to meet her. <laughs> so this is my favourite book of all time. You might know if you've been on my channel before because I talk about it all the time. So if you don't already know this follows Searsha who's just finished her final year of school and she goes to a kind of school's out, end of the year party and there she meets Ruby who she has this immediate connection with and the two just hit it off, they accidentally steal a kitten together, it's a great fun time but Searsha has been hurt before so she has a no dating rule but their chemistry is undeniable so to get around this rule they come up with this falling in love montage scheme where they have this summer romance without the romance and they just do all the cute falling in love montage things that you find in rom-com films which are Ruby's favourite type of films and it's just like a romantic and a cynic and a grumpy and a sunshine which is my favourite kind of dynamic and it's just a whole 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 lot of fun I love it so much but it's also got this amazing emotion to it um Sirius's mother is suffering from dementia and there's some really really touching moments with that and with her dad getting remarried and everything and it just this book's so it really really speaks to me I love it so much it was one of the first sapphic books I read the first book that made me feel really really seen like as a lesbian and it just means a lot to me so I'm excited to be rereading it <laughs> I can't wait and I'm gonna I'm just gonna make it so pretty with scribbles and tabs and everything because I have a second paperback copy that someone was kind enough to send me as well as a hardback copy that Kira sent me 
so I want to make this one special in its own way as well so I'm just so excited. <laughs> so yes those are some of the books I'm hoping to read this summer. I'm hoping it's gonna be a really great couple of months reading wise. I just I have so many books I want to read like this is just a fraction and it's gonna be good. <laughs> So as always I have all of these books linked down below if you want to add them on Goodreads or anything as well as my social media so you can keep up with me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Goodreads, all that good stuff, probably talking about sapphic books. If you like this video please consider leaving a like, a comment, have you read any of these books, do you want to, what are your thoughts on them and yes just thank you very 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 much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in another video soon.